Hello, everyone, and welcome to the History and Culture of Italy, Part 2. We're excited to have you guys with us, and Mr. Don Smarto is going to give his presentation on Italy, Part 2. So, here we go. Thank you, Thank you Jacqueline, and welcome. Um, I hope you're having a good day. And this is my, if you were with us last uh, month, we did Australia. Uh, I have to admit, this is my favorite one because that's where I'm first generation Italian. So that's where all my ancestors are from. I've had four uh, long trips to Italy, meaning I was there for, uh, in one case, three weeks and another time, two weeks. And most recently, almost a year ago, right before the COVID. So uh, I'm going to move a little bit fast because I've got a lot of cities I want to cover. Uh, so we start with, this is my uh, picture. Every time we land in Italy, I take a picture out my window. Unfortunately, I'm not on the wing usually. Uh, and so this is coming into Italy. And so um, Italy is a beautiful country uh, with just a mixture of, uh, of culture and architecture. And, um, uh, but the last two pictures I just showed you, I tricked you, unfortunately. Um, uh, one's Orlando and the other's Vegas. Okay, that's not Italy. And uh, I love it when people have been to Epcot at Walt Disney World and they said, oh, I went to the Italy at Epcot and I feel like I was there. You weren't there. <laughs> and uh, it, it's nice. It's a nice little rep replica. If you've been to Las Vegas at the Venetian Hotel, they have little gondolas that go not very far. Um, but uh, yeah, you have to be in the actual country to get a feeling for it. So this is landing at the uh, at the airport. And then from there, you take the beautiful trains. You know, it's a wonderful thing about Europe is that the trains are fast and efficient. And um, unlike Amtrak, sorry. Um, and so you can get right into Rome from the airport, pretty economical. And so uh, Rome is actually called Roma. Uh, 20, uh, 2007 year history. It has 900 churches. 40 catacombs. Uh, let me just say very quickly, if you go to Ital Italy, um, you don't have to take a tour, but don't miss the catacombs. You don't see them. Uh, they're usually underground and the entrance is from a church, but that's where the early Christians were buried in the first century. And it's, it's really something wor worth seeing. 39 public fountains of which most of them have been running for almost 2000 years from the same aqueducts. Um, so, uh, so one of the things is this was across from my, my first, uh, not my first visit, but from our hotel a couple of years back, where the things that the ancient Romans built are still there. And so here's the Aurelian wall, which is 271 AD, more than 2000 years old and still standing. And so you have this merging of the old with the new, which I find just fascinating. They, they really don't tear anything down. You have these ancient ins inscriptions and so, so you see the modern traffic going through the walls of what had been the horses and carts uh, anywhere from um, uh, 2,000 years ago to 1,500 uh, years ago. And, and this was a picture that I took. It was next to a restaurant where my wife and I ate about a year ago. And every time they build, they find something else. Because as you probably know, in archaeology, it's always a, a level below the current level, street level. And so, and, but here's the problem. Every time they want to build something, they have to stop because the archeologists have to come in and see what's there. And of course, what they're finding are the foundations, the remnants of older, older buildings. So again, it's just an interesting merging of the two. Now this was next to a bus stop. And so I, I didn't show you the picture of the bus stop, but uh, from our hotel, we, we took a bus and here is this ancient temple that's just right there next to the bus stop. And uh, uh, that day the gate was closed, but you can visit it and there are guides. And this is my wife with another temple that was about a block away. So they have kept everything. Um, now, again, this is close to the bus stop. There I am, you see there's a church in the background with this beautiful bell tower. And then this is one of the many beautiful, see the fountains are artistic. They were designed by a great artists like Bernini and architects, and, and they've been flowing, like I said, for about 2000 years. So we noticed a line and this was um, not, we, we weren't planning on doing this. We thought, well, they must know something we don't know. And when we entered, here is the famous mouth of truth. You may or may not know that. Uh, it's an ancient legend that if you put your hand in there, if you're a liar, it captures your hand and you can't get your hand out. 
um, and if you get, and I did get my hand back out, uh, that you were a truth, truthful person. Uh, so this is from the famous film. I thought I'd throw in some many films about Italy with Audrey Hepburn. And uh, here's the scene where Gregory Peck puts his hand in and he pretends that his hand has been taken off. Uh, if you've seen the film, but he, you know, he has it under, under his sleeve. <laughs> so um, th there are just wonderful scenes. Now, now this is my wife. This is not the mouth of truth at um, that church. This is a replica at the airport <laughs> going back. So uh, we were just having a little fun with that. But again, you have these uh, uh, just beautiful mosaics and frescoes. A lot of the art is in the church. When I brought my son over there a couple years back, uh, he said, Dad, why do we? Why are we going in all these churches? Because as I said, even Rome itself has like, what, over 400 churches. I said, well, that's where the art is. And it is. Um, so even something like a holy water fountain is, uh, you know, marble. And as you can see, the uh, floor, which people have probably been walking on that floor for almost 2,000 years, uh, is, is a beautiful uh, mosaic. This is a choir stall in one of the churches. And this is a catacomb under that church where the mouth of truth was. And uh, the ossuaries are gone. The ossuary is the little box where after a year where the deceased has turned into bones, then from the larger if they have like a coffin, then they go to the little box called the ossuary. The, this one didn't contain any, but probably had the graves of early uh, Christians. Every church is magnificent. I, I can't think in Italy that I was ever in a church that was shabby or not beautiful architecturally. And one thing I would tell, tell people if you're going to Italy, always look up because a lot of the art is on the ceiling and they've just done a wonderful job of preserving um, you know, this has probably been touched up over the years, I would think, because the uh, um, the burning of the candle sometimes smudges, uh, especially oil painting. But you just have this beautiful artwork everywhere, um, and 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 very meaningful things like that red hat there. That's an actual hat, and that means that the cardinal died, and they put his hat up there. And it's just it's a tradition, but uh, but do do in fact uh, look up. So this is a color I noticed especially in Rome, but other cities too. Um, I guess you'd call it yellow or marigold. I, I don't know, but it, you find that color a lot. They seem to like it. Um, this was the uh, front door buttons of uh, an apartment building. I just wanted to show you the some of the last names, Kappa and Sassoni. And uh, uh, the uh, my, my name ends in O, which is Southern Italian, Smarto O. And if you're Northern Italian, it ends in I. Um, very small point. Uh, so again, see that color? This is on one of the alleyways. Um, and here's a, this is a beautiful mosaic of a face, but each tiny mosaic is very small. I mean, they're only just a few inches. So if you just think about the artistry alone, if you love art, you, you, you would love Italy for sure. This is uh, the stones from the Appian Way. The Appian Way was built well around, I think it was around 300, maybe maybe older. And you could see by the thickness of those bricks, people have been walking on the Appian Way for over 2000 years. Uh, it just, it lasted. And because the bricks are higher, the water, you know, kind of runs off, which helps. So this is with me with one of my cameras. Uh, on this last trip, I had a Nikon. Um, I also use a Canon for those who like photography. And uh, one of the great places is the Vatican Museum, which we'll talk about in a moment uh, to take pictures. But, you know, we, we do know what the ancient Romans look like. Now, not the poor people, only the, 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 the patriarchs, the, the rich people, the patricians, uh, because the artists were very good. And so the statues, which are mostly in marble, is pretty close to what the actual person looked like. So even though we don't have photography, and painting uh, at this age was still a little flat and crude. Uh, we really do know what these people look like just from uh, all the uh, statuary. This is a famous uh, statue of uh, Augustus Caesar. And we know from microscopic uh, indications, it was in color. See, we're thinking all statues were white because they were marble. It actually was uh, in brilliant colors, but in time, all the color went away. This is of course the Colosseum. Um, which goes back to 72 AD. And it's considered kind of a, a shrine because there were so many early Christian martyrs, but it's um, 510 feet wide, 157 feet high. Now people often think 
that it disintegrated because parts are missing. Uh, the truth there is that parts were stolen. Uh, part of it is, uh, uh, you see those marks? Those marks used to be uh, iron clamps. 300 tons of iron clamps were stolen for the new St. Peter's Basilica. So they used it as a quarry. But now you can go in sections you could never go before. So if you go to Italy now, you can go to the subterranean level where they kept the animals and the gladiators. And uh, the first, my first two trips there, that was not open. And they put a cross there too uh, for the martyrs. And once a year, usually on Good Friday, the Pope will, will go there and, and do a, a mass in the, in the Colosseum. Looks beautiful at night as well. Uh, and, it, and it's very close to a lot of other things. So here is the Arch of Constantine. They would build an arch every time the army was triumphant. And uh, you can't tell from this picture, it's right next to the Colosseum. On this one, you can. So here's the Colosseum in the middle and the arch is right next to it. And then you go a little further over uh, to my right or your right. And there are some ancient ruins of, uh, of, of the Roman government. So there was a movie called Roman Holiday. And uh, again, this is, I think this is a Bernini uh, uh, fountain, but they're all, they're works of art as well. Uh, just beautiful. Uh, this one's in the shape of a boat. And again, this one goes back to the Renaissance. And you can't keep children away from water. We know that. Federico Fellini did a film called Roma. Uh, the Italian, these are motorcycle policemen. And uh, this is the famous statue of Moses, which is in this, uh, a, a church called uh, uh, Pietro and Vincola, Vincoli, which is uh, Peter and Chains. And uh, the reason that Moses has horns is a mistranslated rays. When he comes back down from Mount Sinai, his face shone with light. And they mistranslated... Uh, uh, rays into horns. <laughs> so because Michelangelo did it, they've never taken the horns off, but mistranslation. Um, so uh, again, you, you know, you can go back to these uh, churches at different times of day and how the light comes and changes it. This church was very close to the uh, train station in Rome. And of course, that's supposed to be uh, John the Baptist who was uh, uh, beheaded. Um, a lot of street vendors, the street vendors are very different than like you would find in New York City where they're doing, you know, hot dogs and uh, uh, burritos and tacos. Um, this is a uh, water chestnuts. Um, you, you're just going to find very different things. Uh, salads. Um, one of my favorites is uh, the buffalo mozzarella salad. It's basically tomatoes, buffalo mozzarella with oregano and some mint and, um, and, and uh, virgin olive oil. Uh, very, very healthy. Uh, you'll find a lot of brilliant actors, a lot of actors, they'll dress in costumes. So, you know, there's horses all over, mostly Rome, where you can go for a carriage ride. The Trevi Fountain, probably the most famous one, you know, three coins in the fountain. Well, that is 85 feet high and 68 feet wide. And actually, it and uh, what a lot of people don't realize when you look at this magnificent fountain, it has figures everywhere is you go down a little narrow kind of walkway and then suddenly here's the fountain. But what you can't tell, this next picture helps a little, it's, it's, it, the fountain is part of a building. And I forget what the building is, it was probably a government building years ago, but, but the fountain is built into the building. So it's not really freestanding and it's only been shut down twice in its history. Um, and and um, I think I have that in a slide. Again, this is by the, uh, the famous Spanish Steps, another beautiful, beautiful fountain. Uh, these are some of the figures that are inside um, the, the Trevi Fountain of uh, horses and people. Um, it just, you know, it takes a while to just take it all in. So the movie Three Coins in the Fountain, the tradition is, and people keep doing it, if you throw money in uh, backwards over your shoulder uh, and it lands in the fountain, you will come back to Rome. And every time I've thrown coins, I've come back. Well, <laughs> you know, it's a legend. Um, there's thousands and thousands of dollars every day in coins there. And if you take a coin out of the fountain, you will be arrested because it's illegal. Uh, so don't do that. Uh, they vacuum the coins every day and give them to charity, which is, which is good. Um, comes at the end of the aqueduct. I won't go into all of this. This is a little historical, but uh, they collect $1,000 a day in our money. Uh, from from the fountain. So this is the famous scene from La Dolce Vita, which is the sweet life with Marcello Mastriani. And he's in the fountain. I guess they permitted them to, to film that. And one of the two times that the fountain was closed is when, when the actor Marcello Mastriani died. 
They closed the fountain in his honor and projected him on the side of the fountain, uh, which was nice. The only, the only other time they closed the fountain was somebody um, threw dye in and they had to shut it down and get the dye out before all of the uh, statuary would have been stained. I forget what color it was. So you have these little vehicles everywhere and motorcycles. Well, you, you will understand that the roads are small because all they had was carts and horses. So the trucks can't get through every street. So the best mode of transportation, uh, not for tourists, um, is a motorcycle or a motorbike um, because you can move in and out of, of traffic more quickly. Now, a quick uh, comment about Dallas. You all know Dallas, this is the mix master. You know, if you come in from Grand Prairie, you go on either I-30 or you take 35 um, and then it all converges right before the city. And you certainly know that the most famous vehicle in Dallas is the Ford 150 pickup truck. You'll find pickup trucks everywhere. Uh, you know that people like big vehicles down here, like the Navigator, uh, pretty large, right? Um, like the Hummer. Well, you're not gonna find any of these in Italy. In fact, uh, my son at one point, I was leaning on a car and my son actually said, don't hurt the car. What he meant by that was, the car, would, this is a real car, it's not a, it's not a toy. And he was afraid I was gonna hurt it by leaning on it. But you would look at now in Texas traffic, that thing is not gonna survive, is it? No. But you know, it's an equal playing field because everybody has a small vehicle. Um, you're not gonna find gigantic vehicles on the highway. They drive badly, very bad. I rent one year, way back, 1985. My wife and I went to Italy, I rented a car, went into the traffic in a half an hour, went back to the car rental and returned the car. I said, I just, I can't do this <laughs> because everybody was just going wherever they wanted, whenever they wanted. Uh, the food, you know, I'm gonna be talking about the food a lot because uh, I keep getting this question. Somebody asked me Sunday, where can I get a good, a, a good Italian meal? And I said, Italy. <laughs> now, of course I was partly joking, but the truth is, I mean, if you, you, you either have to know an Italian cook in which the recipes were passed on from their great grandparents to their grandparents. Um, and that's my son, by the way. Uh, and, and by and large, they eat very, very healthy. So you're going to find in a lot of the Italian cooking, fresh tomatoes, cheese, certainly olive oil, and you're going to find uh, uh, parsley and oregano and, and, and onions and always fresh. So um, they're real big on cheeses. Um, and uh, there's, a, by the way, there's an Italian restaurant, uh, Italian grocery store near Baylor Hospital. And whenever I go to Baylor for to visit one of my doctors, we were there yesterday. It's a beautiful, it's been there since I think the 1940s or 50s. And it has, uh, and I buy all my cheese down there. So a little, it's called Jimmy's, uh, Jimmy's Italian Market grocery store, something like that. Uh, bread, um, my complaint about Asian, I, I, I love Asian food, but my complaint is they don't serve bread. <laughs> and we, we know that. Uh, but, you know, it always starts with a wonderful freshly baked bread. And, and I, I hope you've eaten. Uh, actually, I have not eaten. So I'm making myself hungry right now. Uh, olive oil, they always prefer what they call the uh, virgin olive oil, which means the first press. Um, and, and very healthy for you. So here's the question I get. Is Olive Garden, which is actually not far from where I am right now, the summit, is that real Italian food? Do you want me to answer that? <laughs> um, no, it, it's Italian American food. Not to say that the food is not good, but when you go to a, a mall and you see they have pizzas out there, it's not going to be the same as in Italy. And uh, when we talk about Naples, I'll explain why. So all these places are okay, but uh, Italian American food is not Italian. Um, the American version is always heavier, too much salt, the portions are too large, they're often frozen. Uh, here are things that they don't have in Italy. They don't have garlic bread. So if you go there, don't ask for it. They have what's called bruschetta, which is a, kind of a, a toasted French bread or Italian bread with olive oil, and then they put some seasoning and some crushed tomatoes on it. So that's what you ask for. Um, uh, marinara sauce uh, is lighter in Italy. Uh, they don't have Italian dressing. So don't ask for Italian dressing in Italy. Uh, it's gonna be olive oil basically on your salad. And no, they don't have fried mozzarella steaks. 
uh, sticks. Um, so see, my, my mother would make the pasta in the morning as I'm sure her uh, grandmother did as well. And you know, some people have pasta machines. So if you've ever had, if you've ever lived in a home where they made the pasta fresh in the morning and then you ate it later that day, you know the difference and you have to dry it and you hang it up. My mother used to put it on a floured bed sheet and, and this is making your own ravioli where you can put meat in there, you can put cheese in there. Uh, again, I'm making myself hungry right now. Uh, the best part of the meal is the conversation. Now, this is the great distinction if you're in Italy. Uh, we have what's called here fast food. I, I guess I'd call what they do in Italy as slow food because the meal isn't about eating alone. It's about family and friends. It's about conversation and laughter. Um, so there's no hurry. Uh, you have the uh, antipasta, which is the uh, the ancelotta capris we mentioned. Uh, Zuppa di polo is a, a chicken soup. Then you'd have spaghetti. When when college friends would come to my home, they would eat a lot of spaghetti. And then the main course would come. It would be meat or veal. Well, they thought that the pasta was the main course. No, it's kind of like um, the appetizer. And then you uh, cannoli is uh, the uh, dessert at the end. Uh, this is a, a picture of my mother, and she was a great cook. And uh, this is where her, her advice, uh, I can make it very, very simple. Always use fresh ingredients, never frozen, cook very slowly, serve one item at a time and eat slowly. That was it basically. So, so her spaghetti sauce, which um, she called gravy, uh, would take four hours. She put fresh garlic in, she simmered. Um, and so that all the flavored kind of mixed, mixed together. Uh, it's just one of my favorite pictures here. So uh, there's that color again. This is the near the Via Venuto. This is the uh, uh, like the Park Avenue of Rome. Um, and there was a scene in La Dolce Vita where so so before COVID they were eating outside in enclosures, which is very interesting because I'm sure they're still using those enclosures. Um, and you know most of the restaurants uh, they use real linen and real plates. Um, yes, they have fast food over there, but not as they, they really believe that that eating and cooking is uh, is something to, to be savored and to be enjoyed. Um, let's look at some of those water fountains. So, so these are just water fountains from different towns I took pictures of. And here's a, a, a little, uh, a child with a sea turtle, but you know, but it's a fountain. And I just think that's amazing. I mean, we don't do that here in America. I mean, if we have a public fountain, you just press the button and it's a cooler, but um, everything is a work of art. And some of them are quite large, obviously. I showed you that one before. This is a holy water fountain, which would be in a church. Now, the Vatican City, the smallest city in, uh, in the world, uh, it's about the size of the Magic Kingdom. It has a ton 110 acres. Uh, it was created in 1929. See, people think the Vatican goes back centuries. The, the, the papacy goes back centuries, but the Vatican as a country was originated by Mussolini, Benito Mussolini in 1929. So they have their own post office, they have their own bank. Um, and this is the second uh, St. Peter's. It's, whether you're a Catholic, a Roman Catholic or not, it is worth visiting because the architecture is fantastic. You can take a tour. This is from the gardens. They let you go into the gardens. This is the famous Bernini statue. Um, and I refer to that as the $800 picture because I got pickpocketed when I took that picture. That's a whole nother conversation. But as I brought my arms up, somebody took... Uh, they got my traveler's checks, they got my passport, and $800 in cash, so my son kidded me about that picture. This is, uh, you'll find this in St. Peter's. This is the only work of art by Michelangelo that he signed, and it's a uh, Carrara marble, and uh, sadly, uh, now it's behind plexiglass. You can't touch it, you can't get near it, because a guy in 1972 with a hammer um, broke off some of the Virgin Mary's fingers and something else. And so they had to um, redo some of it. Um, the Vatican Museum started by this Pope uh, in 1590. Uh, it, it, you, you will need, if you see everything in the Vatican Museum, you'll need five days. You, you probably won't have five days. So give it one day. You do not want to go to the Vatican Museum for two hours. You're going to hardly see anything. It has one of the greatest collections. This is, of course, the uh, Sistine Chapel, which Michelangelo painted from uh, from ceiling to uh, the floor level. And uh, they're just uh, there's just so much to see there. They don't let you take pictures. Yes, I took pictures because everybody else was. 
but you're not supposed to. That's because when you leave uh, the uh, the chapel, there's a gift shop, so you're supposed to buy the books <laughs> of the color pictures. This is this famous uh, stairway where uh, it the, the stairway is so flat that horses used to be able to go up and up and down it. Um, but it takes you from one high level to a lower level. Uh, Shoes of the Fisherman, uh, one of the you know films about the papacy, Angels and Demons. You think that all of these were filmed in the Vatican. None of them were filmed in the Vatican because the Vatican does not allow you to film. So everything had to be a replica. There was recently, I think on Netflix, um, a story of the, uh, the older Pope going out, the newer Pope coming in, and really good film. And it looks like it was shot in the Vatican. It was not. Uh, in fact, at one point, they're sitting in the Sistine Chapel, and that was all a recreation uh, that they did. Uh, the Vatican Museum has 70,000 artifacts, of which at any time, 20,000 are on display. 54 galleries, really, really worth seeing. So you have, so here's one marble gallery of just bust of ancient Romans. By the way, it's not a museum of the church, uh, part of its church history, but it's also Roman history. Uh, here's an example of the map room. It's actually a corridor. And I, I, I wanted the little boy in, in, well, he's a teenager, to show you how large these maps were. Now, this is before GPS, and they actually got a lot of the geography correct, which is amazing, um, you know, without aerial photography, for instance. Here's an alabaster vase, just gorgeous. Here's another vase. I mean, it just it's just filled, filled with wonderful, wonderful treasures. This is a mosaic table. I mean, look at that. That's all inlaid marble. This is in the Vatican Museum. Here's another, again, look up. This is one of the ceilings in one of the rooms. This is another um, ceiling, uh, kind of a dome ceiling in another room. So just look in every direction. This is a, a statue in the courtyard of the Emperor Octavian. Now you have no way of knowing how big it is until I put my son in the picture and you will see that it's quite a large, <laughs> large head. Um, again, just a beautiful sculpture. Uh, this is um, uh, a sarcophagus, which they would put bodies in there and they would bury people. And sometimes the casket would go inside it. And it's a, it's an historic thing. And some of them go back uh, easily 2000 years and older. Now you're not supposed to climb in there. Um, yeah, that's me in one of them in 1984. So don't tell anybody I did that. But it wasn't that artistic. So I don't think I, I heard anything. Um, this is connected to the Vatican. It's a, um, uh, it was, it was, it was, if armies were, um, uh, invading, like, unfortunately what happened to the Capitol building on the 6th, there was an underground tunnel that the Pope could go, uh, to this mausoleum and, and hide. So, uh, the reason a lot of these things are built like that, they're fortresses because they had enemies. Now we go to Firenze, which is Florence, uh, my son's favorite city. Why? He's an artist. And so Florence is the seat of the Renaissance. That is the largest domed building in the world. And that is the cathedral that is in, in Florence. Um, and, it's, and really it's, it's something you really wanna see. This is the cathedral from the palace of the, um, uh, you know, you had these uh, famous families of which many of them, uh, many of the popes came out of these families. And so these families, um, uh, like the Medici is very, very, very famous. Um, the palaces are still there and you can visit them. So this is a, one of the bridges. Uh, none of the bridges uh, except one in Florence are original. The reason is the Nazis, the bridges were used by the allies to bring in uh, uh, when they invaded from Sicily, uh, trucks and whatnot. And so all of them were dynamited. So, so they reconstructed the, the bridges with the same stone that they found in the water. And they tried to go as close as they could to the original um, design. Uh, everywhere you go, there's artists working. This is a view of the cathedral, the front of the cathedral, 500 feet high. Do you wanna know how high that is? That's the Washington Monument. Washington Monument is 550 feet high. Uh, so, so at the highest point, it's 500 feet. Um, these are the famous uh, gates of paradise. Uh, these are the doors to the baptistry, which is kind of a separate structure. Actually, the ones you see on the outside are, are a replica, but you can't see the real ones inside. They just didn't feel that being real gold, they should keep them on, on the uh, inside. Uh, another film done there. Of course, the great uh, statue of David. 
uh, where, where it's 12,000 12, pounds. It used to be outside. People don't know this. It was meant to be on a roof, which is why the scale is off a little bit. Um, I don't have time for an artistic explanation, but it was meant to be looked from the ground up and eventually erosion and everything. So they brought it in inside. And these are, these are just replicas of it. So there is a replica of it in, in, the, in the square uh, in Florence. Again, you have uh, vendors, uh, another view. That's the baptistry on the right, which is also a bell tower. Uh, it's gorgeous art in there. You'll have these marketplaces for different things. Like here's a marketplace just for leather and another one of uh, sweaters and yarn. The padlocks you'll see, it's in Paris too. When people get engaged, they put their name on a padlock, then put the padlock on the bridge, and then they throw the key in the water. So the whole idea is, you know, that our union is going to be forever. Uh, the city fathers don't like that because it adds tons and tons of weight. So they come along every month and they, they take off all the padlocks. Uh, otherwise, there would be hundreds of thousands of them. But if you see that, that's the tradition. This is only the, the only bridge still surviving, the Ponte Vecchio, which it means the old bridge. It usually, it was the bridge that went from the uh, the, the uh, palace to their art museum, or it was kind of another palace. What it, uh, one Nazi general rebelled against Hitler and said, I'm not gonna explode this thing, and he didn't. And um, you can see like they're all little houses. Well, they're businesses. Today, uh, the old bridge, the Ponte Vecchio are jewelry stores. So the Nazi general disobeyed Hitler. We have one of the original, this is the only original bridge that is in Florence, Italy. And uh, they're all uh, beautiful, uh, jewelry and and they do wonderful jewelry there um you'll definitely want to come back with a souvenir you'll find something reasonable you can barter a little bit but it will cost you because uh, they use real gold and uh just be beautiful beautiful jewelry um this is the ponte vecchio the uh, the palace of the medici and again you can go in there and here's a view looking up to the tower uh we were there on holy week so this was on good friday in one of the churches And actually, this was a ceremony on Saturday night before Easter where uh, the uh, bishop or the cardinal uh, lights a candle and goes in. And then at midnight, which becomes Easter, uh, all the fireworks go off and all the bells. So by, by sunrise, Easter, in the city of Florence, every bell rings and fireworks go off. And it's really, it's really something to see. Then they have a parade and they're all in Renaissance costume. Um, which is uh, again, really, really very pretty. And then uh, in the courtyard was a full orchestra, uh, a, a symphony orchestra. Um, and, and a lot of these things are free. I mean, there, there was no admission being charged. Music is everywhere. I mean, they, there are people who are in street corners. It's a very romantic, I mean, all of Italy is very romantic, but, uh, and these are good musicians. I mean, you, you could just stand there and listen to them for the, for the longest time. Uh, these are two gypsies in front of a church. I'm moving kind of fast because I have a lot of cities to cover and I might go over a few minutes. Uh, <clears throat> the, uh, <clears throat> excuse me, again, the interesting thing about a cafe is they don't rush you. You can sit there for four hours and eat very slowly and they don't rush you. Um, when I first got there, my son uh, said as we landed, Dad, I'm on a diet. <clears throat> He's in Italy. I, I didn't think those were the right things. Well, I, I said in my book about it, I have a book about Italy, that um, uh, as soon as he saw some cannolis and um, he, he never, my son never met a gelato shop he didn't like. And so the diet kind of, if you're going to go over there, don't be on, on a diet. The gelato is not exactly ice cream. It is just fantastic. So I said in my book, look, never met a gelato he did, did not like. Uh, and they're in different flavors, just absolutely fantastic. Um, the, the, the cakes are not only delicious, but they're decorative. So, you know, anyone could throw a fruit on top of a coffee cake, but, but look at the design. So again, we have some artistry. Um, this was, um, again, just a, an open market. And the pizza there is nothing like the pizza here. Why do I say that? It's thinner, um, it's uh, the margarita pizza is the one that they really like, which is like, does not have a ton of meat on it. Um, mostly you're gonna drink bottled water uh, with or without a ga gaso, which is gas, which is carbonation. 
Um, my wife liked carbonation. I liked it flat. Uh, always on the table, olive oil and vinegar. And, you, you, you know, don't ask for Thousand Island and they probably won't give it to you. They probably don't have it. But the pizza was just the best in the world. Uh, I have a little portion here on doors. I mean, these are doors that, again, go back like to the Middle Ages, thousand years. Each one has a different design. Look at that. And structured and said, I mean, they've lasted over a thousand, two thousand years. A lot of the doors are wood and carved, hand carved. Uh, look at how large they are. This is a door to a church. Uh, one of the reasons the doors are so high is sometimes the prince would come in on horseback. So the door had to be high enough so uh, he could get in with his horse. I mean, look, look at the size of that door. Um, and yet they're, they're built on a, um, um, I can't describe the hardware, but but they op one person can open them. So it's not like it takes 40 people to op open the door. Uh, but again, these are all, all originals. Uh, this door here to the Milan Cathedral is all uh, relief, and it tells uh, biblical stories. And it's all, all metal. This is Siena. Uh, Siena is one of the small towns in, in the region of Tuscany, and it's a, a hill town. The reason they built a lot of the cities on hills was, again, because there were enemies. And um, it, it's easier to see your enemy coming if you're on the high ground. So as you can see, it's built very high up. And so what uh, my son and I did was we just walked all over Siena, but we didn't eat where the tourists ate. That's another one of my little tips. Um, they don't sit around watching TV. They watch people. Uh, and that's a, a big activity. This is in the town of Siena. That's the uh, public building. And this is, now I wasn't there. These aren't my pictures. The next picture is they have a famous horse race. They put down dirt in the public uh, plaza and uh, the different families have their colors and, and I don't think they have a saddle, but people do get injured. They have a horse race that goes around and it attracts thousands and thousands of people who come from all over the world. So if you're there, it's called a, a Paleo. If you're there when it happens, you'll, you'll really want to see it. We weren't there when it happened, but you can see here's one of the falls. Uh, what's the big sport over there? You know what it is, it's soccer. Uh, obviously you won't find baseball in Italy. Uh, hand gestures, you know. In college, a professor came up to me and grabbed me by the wrist and said, now talk. Well, uh, uh, we Italians talk with our hands very much. And, and that, uh, that gesture there with the fingers and the thumb means, uh, what are you saying? It's a question. It's like a question mark. Uh, here's a child using hand gestures. Uh, I watched these guys in, in a park in Milan talk for an hour. Their hands never stopped moving for a second. There's a phrase, if your hands aren't moving, I can't hear you. Um, you don't have to, you know, if you're not Italian, you don't have to talk with your hands. But um, again, uh, being on a hillside, you just see these uh, uh, beautiful little villas. Um, and mostly it's these clay tiles on the ceilings and they use red a lot. Uh, again, remember these buildings, very narrow because you didn't have to have a truck or, or even a car go down them. Uh, at the most, it would be a cart or a horse but they were all built to last. This was a little restaurant that we ate at. I think it only had like five or six tables, but it was off the beaten track. And they cooked to order, meaning, yeah, there was a menu, but the, the, uh, the chef just said, well, what do you want? And cooked it fresh. I mean, that's the kind of meal you want to get. So don't go near the tourist traps. The food will be good, but walk in about a mile. And it's these little tiny restaurants that are gonna be the great, great food. So there's Anapasto, one of their um, uh, always uh, fresh olives, artichokes you can see in there. Some, um, and uh, um, this is a, their uh, desserts as well are absolutely delicious. You have these uh, vendors who, uh, you know, basically kind of get a little show. This guy here worried me a little bit. He, he smothered himself in gold paint. I don't know how healthy that is. Um, but this is what he looked like when he was, you know, like an old time uh, photographer. I don't know that I'd want to put gold paint on my face and hands every day, uh, but, but it is fun. Uh, this is a guy who in chalk would do duplicates of famous works of art. Well, then when the rain came, it would all be gone. He didn't mind. They weren't permanent. Um, and he was truly an artist. He would just put money in his box to uh, provide for him. Milano, that's kind of a contemporary city. So Milano was pretty much destroyed during World War II. Uh, it's the second largest city in Italy, and it is known for fashion and design. Uh, everybody there is really well-dressed. But here's the largest church in Italy. It's not St. Peter's. 
It's the fourth largest in the world. And the great thing is you can go on the roof and uh, it has 135 spires. And um, again, here's that door with all the biblical scenes. This is on the roof. Now it's, it, this is stone, so it's not gonna collapse. And you have a wonderful view. You know, from there, you see the Alps. You see the snow-capped Alps because Milan is very far north. And uh, again, a very cosmopolitan city. This is my son at the edge. I will not go to the edge. I'm afraid of heights, uh, but he's not. Um, but uh, again, you just you have a wonderful view. This is inside the cathedral. Again, look at how ornate that flooring is. Um, my son asked me, he said, uh, that, you know, in a Catholic church and a cathedral, there are many altars. And he said, what is that on that one altar? Is that a casket? And I said, yeah, it is. And he said, well, who's in the casket? And I said, well, that's uh, St. Charles Borromeo. Uh, he was the counter, he did the counter reformation and he came from Milan. And uh, of course, what you're seeing is a face mask on him. It's a gold mask because he died a long time ago. And uh, from what I hear, his skeletal remains are pretty much uh, not looking well, um, but it, it's on there. So uh, look at this one picture. This shows you different modes of transportation. The guy on the left is walking and there's a car and there's a motorcycle and a bicycle and a scooter and a streetcar. So you're gonna find every mode of transportation and the rent-a-bikes that, you know, we have some in Dallas too, that you just put your credit card and you take your bike. Uh, again, here is, this was in Milan, um, having another wonderful meal of, you can see the shrimp in there and the corn, the salads. The salad itself was a meal. I mean, you, you could, between the salad and bread, you didn't have to have much of anything else, um, but very delicious. Obviously the pasta is great. Um, I'm a diabetic, I watch my carbs, but yes, you have to cheat when you're in Italy. Just bring your insulin with you if you're insulin dependent. But uh, again, the pasta is, is just delicious and the meatballs uh, as well. I hope I'm making somebody hungry. Uh, this is the first indoor mall in the world. Well, what it was is uh, in Milan, they, they covered all these shops with this structure. So it essentially became a mall. So it's considered like the first shopping center um, basically in Western, uh, in Western culture. And that's uh, at night, it's glass and it's all uh, beautifully colored. Uh, angels are a symbol in the Bible, of messengers from God. And so if you look all over in the churches, you'll find angels, you'll find angel statues, you'll find them, uh, you have to look up, you'll find them in the architecture of a building, you'll find them um, almost like gargoyles, but they're angels looking down. And, and that's why I say you have to keep looking up as well as out. Uh, this one is weathered over the years because it's probably bronze. Then we go to Venezia, which is Venice. That's my favorite city. As I said, my son's favorite city is Florence, but I love Venice. Don't swim in the canal. That's a no-no. Uh, this, this is, uh, you know, Epcot in Disney World. Um, and this is what I showed you before, the Venetian Hotel. Nothing like the real one. Um, that, that, again, is a nice replica. But you, you come in by train because it's a series of islands. And immediately you're on a boat. And uh, this is the famous uh, tower. That tower actually collapsed in 1902 from an earthquake. So what you're seeing is a reconstruction from 1912. It's not the original tower, but they use the original plans. It's next to St. Mark's Square. So you can go up in the tower, and this is my photo from the tower. And uh, Venice is 117 islands. Uh, and that is St. Mark's Cathedral, very famous. Supposedly the body of St. Mark is in there. I mean, we don't know if it is or not, but um, everything is gonna be water. This is the famous plaza. They've done many movies there. And that's where you're gonna find uh, the, you know, all the pigeons. And the, uh, the water of the canals is actually 35 feet deep. So that's, that's pretty deep. And they have 400 bridges. Um, you can't be a gondolier if you want to be. There are families of gondoliers. So you have to study. You have to, when there's an opening, like when somebody retires or dies, there's an opening. And then you could be voted in as a gondolier. You can't just decide you're going to buy a boat and be a gondolier. It is a guild and it's a highly, highly controlled. Uh, the buildings, I mean, mostly they're mansions on the water. And the strange thing is you would say, well, wouldn't the water over the years decay them? The interesting thing is, I'll make this real short, is the wood piers they're built on over time became like cement. They got, uh, they got calcified. And so the truth is if the water level went down, the buildings would collapse. The buildings need the water to stay. Um, and you could probably look that up uh, if you want to, but they're very narrow. Uh, a gondola ride is pretty expensive by the way. 
Um, but it's one of the ways you see. It's interesting that, you know, there are musicians that will play for you uh, wonderful songs like O Solo Mio, Santa Lucio, Funicoli, Funicoli. Those are Neapolitan ballads. And what's really strange because it's, it's you're, you're in Venice, but everybody requests what is uh, songs from, from Naples. This is one of my pictures just showing them parked. Um, and the, the film, The Tourist, uh, was all filmed in uh, Venice. And so what they have to do is they have to bring their goods in every morning. So you'll see them delivering food for restaurants. You'll see them delivering um, uh, towels and linens for hotels. Everything has to come in by water. There, there's no uh, cars in, in Venice. Uh, here's a, a guy bringing his cart in in the morning. This will have souvenirs and whatnot. Uh, this is outside of St. Mark's, a very popular place. So you're going to have a lot, a lot of people. Uh, and this is the entrance to St. Mark's. And those pillars are each a different kind of marble. Uh, just, just gorgeous in terms of artwork. This is the famous uh, Four Knights, which is on the corner of St. Mark's. And at one point in 1204, there were four uh, knights or kings that were all ruling uh, the province. Now, there was only one way I could take this picture. This leads up to St. Mark's Cathedral, and uh, they had their own prison there, too. The only way I could take that picture was at sunrise at 6 a.m., because two hours later, all you would have on those benches is tourists. So you'll never see a picture like this unless you get up really early, and I wanted to get a picture of it. Uh, all alone. Um, remember, when they built buildings, they didn't have modern, the mathematics we have, they didn't have modern electric equipment, and yet everything is in plumb, everything um, is is perfectly designed, which just uh, shows their intellect. This is my son walking in one of the prisons. Uh, they, had, they had their own prisons uh, under the palace uh, in Venice, um, the, uh, the Duke. So, you know, they were probably political enemies. These weren't like uh, shoplifters. These were always political enemies. Uh, Venice lights up at night beautifully. You know, they talk about Paris being the city of lights, but so, so is Venice. So this is with, uh, from a bridge with a time lapse, meaning you open the camera up for a few minutes. And, and it's, just, it's just such a gorgeous city at night. And the boats are still running uh, at night as, as well. I'm just showing some of the films down there. So the way we would have a car in our driveway, some of the people had a boat in their uh, driveway. Um, there is a, a, the famous uh, a director, uh, David Lean, uh, filmed a film in Venice with called Summertime with Audrey Hepburn. This was not planned. She, uh, her stunt double was supposed to go in the water, but she fell in the water. That water is not for swimming. Uh, there's some sewage in it. As a result, she got a disease. Uh, up until the end, if you ever saw her on a large screen, like on Golden Pond, if you look, her eyes are red. She never got over an illness she got from the water of the canal in Venice. And I forget what the name of it was, but they could never cure it. And so on a big screen, you'll always see Audrey Hepburn, uh, not Audrey Hepburn, Catherine Hepburn, uh, having this red, reddish look. You're always gonna find fresh uh, vegetables and fruit. My mother used to make this for Easter, where you put an egg in the bread, and this was usually around Holy Week, uh, Easter time. Uh, they have a, a big festival in Venice where everybody dresses in costume, uh, and the masks are very ornate. People spend a lot of money on uh, these masks that they purchase. And this, uh, this actually frightened me. I walked into a church in Venice, and it was a little dark, and I thought it was a real person. It was a statue of an altar boy holding a box uh, for donations. Um, the windows, I, I just thought this was interesting. These are windows that I took all over Italy, but look at the different sizes and styles. And some of them are quite large. I mean, look at the man, and look at the size of the window. Um, and Murano is an island near Venice. It, it is, again, its own city. Uh, they were afraid that the glass blowers were going to burn down Venice, so they forced them to go to the island of Murano. And so uh, you go there by boat. That's the only way to get there. And it's, it's like a, a mini Venice. And this is where, uh, again, that color, uh, they're, they're blowing glass. You can see there are demonstrations of the glass that they'll do for you. But uh, this is a glass chandelier in one of the churches. Another one, this was another church. 
So a lot of the great glass, if you have glass jewelry and it came from Italy, it probably came from Murano. And they also do sculptures and dishes. And this is a sculpture outside of their, their tower uh, lit up at night. Uh, again, there, there are canals. Uh, lions is a symbol of authority. Um, and so you will find these carved lions everywhere in Italy. Again, uh, just look for them. Uh, door knockers, a lot of the door knockers I noticed were, were lions, lion's heads. I'm moving a little fast because I want to get to our last city. This is Pompeii, of course, the ancient ruin of Pompeii. And the Mount Vesuvio uh, uh, erupted in 79 AD. They didn't have time to evacuate. So the, uh, uh, all these particles of ash and burning uh, covered the entire city. Uh, 10 billion pounds of ash and pumice fell in two days. Uh, on an average, it's 20 feet deep, but in some places, 70 feet deep. The city was lost for 1,700 years. Think about that. And one historian, uh, Pliny the Younger, talked about nobody believed that the city existed. It was discovered in 1749. But here's the wonderful thing. You must visit Pompeii and Herculaneum, which is nearby. That was the other city covered. Because people died in their tracks. Their bodies were encased in this ash and pumice. So there is a skeleton inside, but they, they're still excavating Pompeii. And you will see parts of, of the city that have been excavated. This is part of the original uh, street that people were actively uh, on. And so it was almost like a time lapse where um, you will see the city as it looked on the day it was covered. So like here's a villa. Now understand they have to take all this ash out, but the mosaics were preserved for all these years. And so you get an idea of how the people lived. And here's here are the body. So what you're looking at is not the body, but the body is on the inside, which of course, because of the heat is just the bones, but they're inside. But it, it formed a perfect image of how people felt. So sometimes you see them, you know, they were asphyxiating from, from the noxious gas. Uh, and you'll see a child, you'll see people in pain. Uh, it's really an eerie thing to see because you're really looking at people in their death throes. Again, uh, we, they're still excavating Pompeii and uh, we'll, you'll still find these frescoes you, all over. You'll find uh, the, the fallen people uh, who were overcome. This, they call this a, a person in prayer because it looked like their hands were up uh, in, in prayer. We had a wonderful guide that uh, um, on his off time, uh, he was one of the security guards there, uh, showed us the reason that that is so high is for um, runnage of water. So you can still go. This was a, a pregnant lady. She's under glass in one of the buildings and they, they knew from x-rays that she was pregnant and they were just starting to excavate this building. And so here at the top, you can see a skull that has protruded from one of these uh, housings. And these are, you know, gigantic uh, water vases, which, uh, which were in a new area they were excavating. By the way, the volcano is still active and three point, uh, three and a half million people still live there. So they're still taking a gamble. It could erupt at any time. Then we go to Naples, Napoli. Um, a beautiful, beautiful city. I won't go into the history right now, but um, you, you go to, to Naples and this is the castle, which has been turned into a museum, really worth going in and seeing. Uh, that's a, uh, a reliquary where they would put a bone of a saint in there, but then they would make it into something that was gold or silver. And uh, of course, there it, Naples is on a bay, the Bay of Naples. And so you have uh, mountains on one side, uh, you're going to have a lot of cruise ships are going to leave from Naples. So here's uh, one of the cruise ships. And, and I'm looking at this thing. It's just gigantic. I mean, look at the cars at the bottom. And look how high that cruise ship is. And I'm thinking to myself, I can't believe I took a cruise before the COVID began that these things never, never tip over. I mean, they're just so gigantic. Well, they do tip over, actually. I don't want to scare anybody if you got cruise ships. It doesn't happen very often. But this was the guy who got too close to the coast, uh, hit some rocks, and... Uh, um, if you remember that scene, uh, the problem is that the lifeboats don't work. The lifeboats in the water don't work and the other ones are on an, on a, an edge. I mentioned fast food versus slow food. You will find McDonald's everywhere. Um, I can go back far enough that I remember when they were 15 cents. Uh, in Milan, this, this is a fashionable area, but if you look, you'll see the, the M. Uh, there, there, is, there is, there's a McDonald's inside the Vatican, but see, it's all gold. 
and marble. Uh, then there's one in Siena in the Olden Building. There's one in Venice. There's one in Rome, um, Florence, uh, in Pompeii. <laughs> they had a McDonald's. Um, and uh, we went to one in Naples. Now, my son wasn't thrilled about this, but uh, I, I knew a little Italian, but not enough. And I asked my son if he would try a small hamburger, like a child's hamburger, just to see if they were the same as in America. So I went up and there was a, a young woman who didn't speak Italian. And so I wanted a little one. So I ordered a Bambino uh, Piccolo. A piccolo is like small and Bambino is like child. So what I'm ordering is a child's um, burger. And she looked at me with a horrible face, called over the manager. Well, actually what I was ordering uh, was a ground baby. I didn't realize that. So <laughs> you got to watch uh, the words you use. So I did get this little uh, burger. My son was not thrilled about it. Uh, he took one bite. He said, you can see by his face how much he enjoyed it. Um, and that was it. That was as much as that burger he was going to eat, but tasted the same. Uh, in, Na in Naples, there was a, a law that pizza has to be cooked in a brick oven and it has to be with a certain kind of dough. Um, so again, just very delicious. Uh, you're gonna find a lot of seafood, seafood because it's a fishing port. And so depending on how far they go out, you're gonna find mussels, shrimp, oysters, uh, crab legs. Um, if you like uh, oysters, which I do. Um, and then of course, uh, if you like wine, um, you're, you're just, I mean, you can obviously get filled just on uh, olive oil and, and bread. But again, if you look at the, um, the garlic, fresh garlic, um, it just, it just adds to the whole seasoning of the food that you're eating. And so again, food is about fellowship. It's about family. It's about conversation. So it's not fast food. It's slow food because you're eating to enjoy the company of your friends and your family. And, um, you know, I did see a lot of people over there smoking, but let me say this, they walk so much and they eat so healthy. I guess the eating healthy and the walking, uh, uh, kind of counteracts all, all the smoking they do. Uh, I make this at home all the time. That's the mozzarella salad with, uh, that's uh, roasted red peppers, artichoke, buffalo, mozzarella, the black olives, and the uh, tomatoes. So here's one of the restaurants uh, we went to, and it was a courtyard. Uh, I just remember just how delicious that was. And this pizza has um, a very thin uh, sliced ham. Uh, that that they use. And then we went down to the Amalfi Coast, which is probably the most gorgeous place in all of Italy. Um, so you, you have to drive down there and then you go to Capri. And so here's the road. And it, I remember taking a half an hour to get literally over a mountain to get to the other side. And so the, the, the roads are twisting and, you know, the bus drivers are Pretty, pretty good. Uh, but if you went over, you would be in big trouble. And then at the top of the mountain, suddenly you look down and you see the city of uh, uh, the, uh, the Malfi uh, city. And they're all built into the rock. It is just absolutely gorgeous. They have a downtown. Uh, here's one of the old lighthouses they have. Uh, then uh, I've got just a couple more cities. I'm going to go a few minutes over. San Donato. Uh, why they're called that is San means saint and Donato is after a saint. And so this is another hill country and you have these beautiful tall trees that you find in a few countries, but mostly in Italy. And again, they're on the top of the hill as a fortress. Um, and so they build these fortress cities on top of the hills. By the way, if you don't walk well, um, start walking before you go to Italy because you're not only gonna walk, but you're gonna walk steeply. And I remember when we went to St. San Donato, that's not as steep as the next one I'm gonna show you, but all these structures go back a thousand years because they're all stone. So uh, this is San Donato and San Gimignano, which is uh, the, the, uh, the fortress hill uh, city. So we went there first, they actually use it for weddings. Um, uh, we came off our cruise ship and they gave us a banquet there, which was really pretty nice. Uh, mostly what we would call in America cold cuts. And they had their own winery, they had their own vineyards. And these are barrels of their own wine. Again, you can see that some of the steps are, are pretty steep. Um, you're not gonna find handicapped ramps very much. Uh, so if, you if you're visiting the older 
parts of the city and you're, for instance, uh, wheelchair bound, um, just you have to be cautious and know where you're going ahead of time. Um, so they have these towers. They have 10 towers um, in the city of San Gimignano and beautiful, beautiful uh, views. I, I already mentioned what my mother said. Uh, this is Perugio. And Perugio is where there was a famous trial of Amanda Knox. If you remember, they accused her of killing her British roommate. But uh, they have a famous football team that, come, well, when I say football, it's not our football. Um, it's, it's a version of, of soccer, basically. But look how high it is. We came in by train and we took a cab up. It would, that walk would take you probably an hour and a half from uh, the uh, ground level. But the whole city is uh, built at, 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 the, at, at a very top level. And Persia is a very beautiful city. Uh, again, a lot of the, uh, the plants are growing into the walls of the building. And uh, every, every small city has a courtyard or has a main plaza where people perform. And I would say, uh, and people still sit on, you know, especially young people, college students, travelers, they still sit on the steps to do people watching. But consider uh, that these were also the scenes of public executions uh, years ago. Hopefully they stopped doing that. But here was a guy playing an accordion and uh, another guy playing a, a zither. Um, great musicians. Uh, uh, one guy was roasting corn. I very much wanted the roasted corn. It does help to know a little of a language. I don't know enough Italian. So he asked me if I wanted extra butter. And I said, oh, yeah. Um, but that isn't what he was asking me. He asked me if I wanted extra salt. <laughs> and so it did not taste very good. Um, so it does help to know a little bit. Uh, the coat of arms of Perugia is the griffin, which you'll find all over. And then the famous uh, bocce candy for, comes from Perugia. They don't let you take pictures inside. They consider like the inside of their store, I don't know, proprietary. So I wasn't allowed to bring, bring my camera in. And then uh, this is my last uh, town, and then I'll go into a conclusion. San Gimignano is a has 10 towers. It's famous, and these towers are very tall, totally stone. They've never fallen, and it's a fortress city. And you have to go by bus or car, but you'll that's the gate on the left to get in. And then from up above, you see these vineyards and these hills. It's just gorgeous view. But again, it's, it's very Gothic because uh, every building is made out of uh, uh, heavy, heavy stone. Um, they didn't have a courtyard in San Gimignano per, uh, as I recall, but they did have a plaza. And, and this was one of them. That was probably a well that probably ran dry years ago. Uh, this is a cheese shop on the left. Uh, they have beautiful ceramics they do. Uh, you know, you probably want to have them shipped back because unless you find something very small, um, we bought ceramics in London and they didn't survive in our suitcase. So no matter how you let them ship them because they know how to, how to pack them. But again, you go in these churches and you're going to find beautiful marble, beautiful works of art. I'm concluding with faces. Um, obviously, I'm Italian, so I love Italian faces. Faces of every nationality, every ethnic group are beautiful in their own way. But uh, most, most Italians are friendly. This guy wasn't because I was taking his picture and he, he's giving me a look like I don't want my picture taken. I think that's a look. Um, but by and large, uh, it's, it, uh, Italy is a romantic place. It's a place where people just sit out and they watch other people. Uh, these were the guys that I saw in Milan who were talking with their hands. Um, I took some pictures outside, uh, this outside of the Milan Cathedral of uh, children with the, these pigeons are kind of, every, well, because people feed them, you'll just find these pigeons like everywhere. And uh, it's just it's just fun. I have a very long lens on my camera so I can take pictures of the children without people seeing me. And because it's another country, I would never post pictures of children like from Grand Prairie on Facebook. You shouldn't do that uh, with pedophiles and all that. But if you're coming from another country, <clears throat> nobody's really gonna know who these children were. And then I had a theme of my book of fathers and sons. And, and you see a lot of fathers, very different than parts of America. They, they love their children. I mean, Americans love their children, but they're very affectionate. They hug their children, they kiss them. And I just saw this uh, everywhere. And um, it, 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 very, it moved me. My father wasn't terribly warm. And so, and so seeing this, uh, and, and the delightful thing is bringing my son to Italy, that was my uh, third trip. And the last one was my, with my wife. 
uh, was just um, just a blessing. Well, what he didn't know is I was taking all my pictures and writing a book. So I, I went to Chicago and I surprised him with a book of our of our trip. You can actually purchase that book on my website, which is www.youthdirect.org if you're interested. It's a coffee table book and it has all the photos of my pictures from Italy and talks a little about uh, the time we went together. So arrivederci means goodbye. And I made it with seven seven minutes uh, almost uh, to go. I know I was moving kind of fast, but there was so much to see in Italy. Um, you know, you can, you can do a travel package where you go to Greece, you go to Italy, you go to Monaco, you go to Spain. But let me just, this is my opinion. If you really want to see Italy, just go there in no other countries and spend at least three days in every city. So you want three days in Venice, three days in Milan. Rome probably needs four or five days. Because um, it's just, you know, if you love museums, if you love art, if you love food, um, you're certainly going to uh, uh, have a wonderful, wonderful time. Economy-wise, uh, you know, it's going to cost about the same here. Um, you can barter in some stores, you know, in terms of, they'll do a little bit of bartering with you if you purchase the items. Don't insult them by uh, giving them too low a bid because uh, they will get insulted. Um, but, but again, it's a, it's a beautiful, beautiful country with a rich history. And uh, if you've never been there, I certainly recommend it. If you've been there, you know, you can keep going back and there's more to see. So thank you so much for joining us today. I really appreciate it.